because we in the People's Republic of Cambridge are so tolerant and generous, we have chosen to provide visas to a few folks from a university called Stanford. You saw a few of them yesterday, and boy, were they smart. Here's a few more examples over the next few talks of what happens when you drink California wine. Our first speaker, Luis de la Sea, has partnered with the good god Morpheus to study sleep, discovering the cortical neuromodulator chorostatin and various other spells that pay a role in hypothalamic hypocretin system, which is a mouthful for a Sunday morning. This is the substance that regulates minor human functions like arousal, wakefulness, and appetite. Welcome, Luis. to talk about sleep. Uh, I really love sleep, uh, and not because I sleep a lot, but uh, because it's a, uh, uh, really a universal uh, phenomenon. Uh, all animals sleep, and obviously that uh, leads to uh, a fundamental question. Why do we sleep? Uh, and uh, I have to admit that we have very little uh, understanding of uh, why we sleep. Um, from the uh, business point of view, uh, the uh, sleep has uh, many uh, interesting uh, opportunities. Um, sleep disorders are highly prevalent. Um, about a, a third of the uh, uh, adult Americans will uh, suffer from sleep disorders at uh, some point in their lives. Um, also. Uh, Children uh, suffer from sleep disorders. 80% um, of children with uh, autism spectrum disorders uh, have uh, sleep problems. Um, and all of us will uh, experience uh, at some point in our lives uh, uh, a decrease in the quality of sleep uh, as uh, uh, sleep quality decreases with, with age. Um, and even, you know, in older age, uh, we know that in Alzheimer's patients, for instance, uh, two-thirds of, uh, of uh, these people uh, suffer from sundowning, which is uh, a, a period of uh, higher activity, high alert uh, at, at night, which uh, causes uh, many of these uh, patients to be uh, institutionalized. So. Uh, Unfortunately, the treatment for sleep disorders is not, uh, not great at this point. Uh, and uh, there's uh, obviously, like I said, a, a very good opportunity, economic opportunity, a billion dollar market. 4% um, of uh, uh, adults in the US uh, were uh, prescribed a sleep aid. And sleep aids these days are uh, made of uh, drugs that knock you down. Uh, they're really very, very poor drugs. They're somehow effective, but uh, uh, they're, they have lots of side effects, and they're really not uh, the most desirable uh, drugs. So what do we do to fix this? Um, well, from the basic point of view, uh, we're trying to understand how the brain controls sleep. And uh, uh, one of the experiments nature uh, to understand this uh, came from uh, narcolepsy. Narcolepsy is a, a this, uh, sleep disorder characterized by intrusions of uh, sleep into wakefulness. And this is a cataplexy event. Uh, so this happens when um, these uh, patients uh, are, uh, uh, have these uh, strong emotions. Uh, and then uh, uh, this REM sleep uh, gets into their, so they get into this REM-like REM uh, state. They're conscious, they're paralyzed. So. Uh, in any case, these patients uh, sleep the same amount of time as, as normal people, uh, but their uh, sleep-wake uh, um, cycles are completely uh, disrupted. Uh, they, they, they're not coordinated. And uh, 20 years ago, uh, we uh, discovered uh, this uh, group of neurons uh, in the brain, uh, particularly the hypothalamus, which are um, missing in, uh, in narcoleptic patients. So um, this uh, discovery and, and many others uh, led really uh, to a revolution in the sleep research field uh, because we had a uh, sort of a Rosetta Stone that uh, allowed us to uh, 
decipher the neural circuitry uh, underlying uh, the control of, uh, of sleep and wakefulness. So um, this uh, neural system that controls sleep also uh, was the first uh, we used uh, to, uh, in collaboration with Carl Dysroth, uh, to implement optogenetics in vivo. And here you can see how uh, optogenetics at work. This is the first uh, publication where uh, we uh, control the activity of these hypercritical neurons in mice. So these mice are sleeping. We shine light on these mice. And then uh, we see that these mice will wake up within 20 seconds, very uh, predictably. So um, this was the first demonstration that using optogenetics, we could uh, uh, um, control, uh, essentially, uh, sleep-wake circuits. And uh, the hypercretin system has also uh, uh, been used in the pharma industry uh, to develop uh, compounds that antagonize um, the uh, hypercretin uh, orexin receptors. And um, there, were, uh, there were several drugs approved uh, by the FDA uh, recently uh, for the treatment of insomnia that specifically affect uh, this neural system. And uh, with uh, more developments uh, in the last few years, we can now uh, uh, design and synthesize molecules that specifically act on these receptors and uh, effectively uh, cure narcolepsy. So, um, what we do in the lab is essentially uh, use the uh, uh, neuroscience uh, tools uh, that are uh, available to us, uh, some developed uh, at Stanford, some developed uh, here, uh, which allow us to uh, monitor uh, neural dynamics uh, in a cell-specific way. Uh, we use also CRISPR uh, editing um, and uh, some of the uh, advanced microscopy that we just uh, saw in the previous lecture, um, as well as optogenetics to uh, map and decipher uh, a complete map of the circuits that control um, sleep and wakefulness. An example of, these, uh, of the uh, uh, application of, of these technologies uh, was uh, uh, implemented uh, in, in the lab to understand uh, what happens uh, in, uh, uh, during sleep in aged mice. And essentially, we, uh, we um, discovered that uh, these uh, hypercretin neurons, which uh, control uh, the boundaries between sleep states, are particularly uh, sensitive in, uh, and, 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 and excitable in aged mice. So uh, we developed uh, drugs that, uh, so here's a, an, an optogenetic experiment in, in, in an aged mouse. So essentially, compared to the, to the previous uh, video, uh, immediately when, when, you, when you shine light onto this mi into these uh, aged mice, the animals wake up. So um, what we've done in the lab is to uh, develop compounds uh, that specifically um, affect the excitability of uh, hypercritin cells or hypercritin neurons in, uh, in aged mice. And we can uh, convert um, a uh, uh, hyper-excitable cell into a uh, normal uh, firing cell. And uh, indeed, we can, uh, by use, using this intervention, we can improve uh, uh, sleep stability in, in aged animals. So uh, what's uh, the future for, uh, um, for sleep research uh, in, uh, in, and, and what are the business opportunities? Uh, well, there are many. Uh, one I just told you about, uh, we can uh, develop molecules to rejuvenate uh, sleep, to make it more stable, to make it more efficient. Uh, and there's a very uh, uh, compelling need for non-pharmacological um, modulation of, uh, of sleep. Um, and there are many technologies now for neural modulation, including uh, transcranial uh, direct uh, uh, current stimulation and uh, ultrasound and many others that allow um, us to harness some of the uh, circuitry uh, uh, involved in, in sleep and wakefulness and control sleep with uh, high precision. So this, of course, uh, has uh, uh, benefits uh, on their own, but uh, also with, uh, uh, with uh, uh, um, revealed that there are many connections of sleep and uh, uh, physiological functions, including uh, activation of the immune system and uh, the ability to fight uh, cancer and tumors uh, during sleep uh, has uh, also been revealed uh, recently. So there, there's a lot uh, to be gained by, by controlling uh, uh, sleep circuits. 
So I don't want to repeat myself, but uh, uh, the next challenges in sleep are to rejuvenate sleep, uh, enhance uh, the quality of uh, sleep during aging, and uh, uh, also uh, um, explore the uh, interactions of uh, sleep and the, and the immune system, and eventually um, understanding uh, the function of sleep. Thank you very much.